Well, hello YouTube and welcome back to the Holtz Mitchell channel and this episode of Mariness Go Round. <clears throat> well, once in a while you get to, you know, a challenge of sorts. I don't quite know how to phrase this, but, um, you know, certain, you know, woodworking machines oftentimes have parts made of wood or plastic um, in places where uh, contact with the tooling sometimes uh, would pose a danger of contacting the wood so that in that way those contact areas are oftentimes um, supplemented with wood or with plastics. Well in this case today in this um, Marinus uh, double end matcher <clears throat> the blocks are going to be out of wood. Uh, we've had them out of plastic before but we started making them out of wood ourselves and in order to make them I started making them on the bridge, bridge port. Um, just kind of turned out that way. There's a little step in these. Uh, right now I'm just in the process of sizing these blocks up. And so the question was, you know, uh, can you use metalwork and tooling to, uh, to work with wood? And the short answer is yes. And the, you know, the, the big difference that, you know, there's some small geometrical differences between woodworking tooling and and metalworking tools but really um, the angles are pretty close to the same uh, the materials are almost identical uh, the only thing that really differs um, in between the two is the speeds at which the tooling turns or ie your cutting speed um, in metals your your cutting speed is going to be a lot slower so um, I've got on here a, uh, see, I think it's 60 or an 80. It's a 75 millimeter um, face mill on here um, with a left hand uh, helix. And, uh, you know, just something I had because of the teeth. It was nice and sharp, so I decided, you know, it's big enough, it's sharp enough. I'll just go ahead and use that for demonstration purposes today. Otherwise, I'd have probably just used something else. I normally have a nice big one. Unfortunately, I'm like a dumb shit. Um, I'm going to chuck it up. Didn't tighten the, the bolt tight enough. And when I turned it on, it was in reverse. And it spun the, the bolt out. And the, uh, and the face mill ended up landing on top of the vise and taking off corners of the teeth. So, Mr. Bozo moment there. Anywho, um, so I'm starting to size these up, and uh, oh, where was I? Oh, yes, the the geometry of the tooth. So, yes, the, the you can use um, metalworking tooling. Now, as far as end mills goes, um, they look. You know, that's where the big difference is in, in tooth geometry. Um, can you use them? I don't know yet. I haven't tried it. I would have to hazard a guess at first glance is probably yes. But again, you got to spin them fast enough. In this case, I'm spinning this thing at the maximum speed of 2300 RPM. Um, the other thing that varies different, uh, that varies significantly between woodworking machinery and metalworking machinery is the rate of feed. Um, the feed doesn't even go up high enough on this thing to really do it any justice, so I just started cranking it by hand. You'll see that here after we get to, to cranking on these things here um, after Now, a bit. The, the problem is with, with the part that I'm making, um, I can't make it, uh, make a, you know, a long stick of it and then, you know, cut it to length. There's a step in there that has to be milled in. Granted, the rest of it I could, you know, make it but with a planer and make a stick out of it, chop it up in short blocks, and then do the groove in there. And that's pretty much what happened here with this. Um, this was all chopped up. So I'm making a double length where I'm going to be putting a, um, a, a stub here in the middle and then just splitting again on the, on the chop saw. So let me swing you around here and uh, we'll get started on this project.
very smooth. bunch of finished or half finished parts here. Sorry about the voice that's going out again today. So the question is, how do you deburr something like this? I mean we got a nice little burr here from the slot cut in and then one down here on the bottom. So the bottom is going to be fairly to, relatively straightforward as is the rest of it. You can either 
lay your wood chisel. You're going to have to have a nice sharp one. Just lay it flat on the surface and then just kind of ease it into the, to the burn that takes it right off. Now the danger is that you're going to gouge the wood so you don't want to take it the other way is to take it at a, at a negative angle and just scrape across it and that pulls it off. And that's what you're going to do with the edge of this part now too, is just go along the edge at the negative rake angle and take off all the burrs. See how that works? Unlike with my pocket knife earlier, we can just, sometimes you're going to have to go from the other way because the grain grows uh, sometimes, you know, a little disadvantageous to your cut. So you'll just have to Same thing on the cross grain. And that's all there is to it for deburring. Well, YouTube, here's our finished parts uh, all finished up. Edge is broken. Now, the reason you, you know, this sounds crazy. The, the reason I did all that. Um, breaking the edge or um, deburring this part, you can get some pretty nasty cuts on hardwoods. Um, the edge was so sharp on these that uh, I did cut myself here, right there, on one of them. So it was one of those necessities where you, because this is a piece of horn beam, so it's pretty hard. This is, you find these on the, uh, horn beam is one of those woods you find on the soles of uh, wooden block planes. Uh, made by Omia and uh, other various you know woodworking tools. So as you can see, it is possible uh, to even mill end grain without burning it. Uh, it's a high degree of similarity in the tooth geometry of uh, metalworking tools compared to woodworking tools. The major difference, like I said before, is just the RPMs at which the tools or the cutting speeds at which the tools operate. Even the materials oftentimes are pretty much the same. Uh, a lot of times you'll have HSFs, knives, and planers, and so forth. Um, you'll even have carbide knives in, in planers at times, um, as far as, you know, like in your routers, your tools, you know, your uh, router bits. Granted, um, a, a bridge port needs to turn a little faster for your most of your woodworking tools. If you plan on reusing router bits on it, um, there are, I think, uh, some RPM multipliers where they double the RPM of the machine and those uh, would work quite well to actually um, be able to use a bridge port as, a, as an overhead router or um, you know for milling wood of different kinds otherwise you're going to have to go to um, bigger tooling uh, where the maximum RPM is, is then optimized like with this um, with this face mill. This is an 80 millimeter face mill. Um, it's been sharpened so it's down to like 78 or whatever it is. But uh, the uh, 2300 RPM on the maximum speed of the, the bridge port is enough to spin this fast enough to where it won't burn. Um, otherwise you'll have a problem with burning issues if you're not turning it fast enough. Or if um, your clearance angle uh, on the tool on the grind um, isn't enough. Now carbide tooling oftentimes doesn't have much of a clearance angle and that's why it also burns in your woodworking tools as well because you don't have a whole lot of clearance angle ground into it just by the virtue of the fact that carbide is such a brittle material and uh, the thinner the edge it has the more sensitive it is and uh, they have a tendency to break off fairly easy so that's the reason that they have that low clearance angle and that's why they burn. Now this is an HSS bit so it has quite a bit of clearance angle and it was I mean it just performed this task just beautifully. Um, I still got a nice fairly sharp edge on this and so I can use it for working on steel or whatever or cast iron whatever I want to use it for later on. Um, it's not dulled to the point where it's unusable for, um, for uh, 
for metal working. So, so these were just, you know, drilled and bored. Um, I did have to space the holes a little different. You know, it's just one of those things that the, the process of setting up on the holes is just, you know, same old, same old. Um, I did have to put in a shouldered hole um, where I drilled a five millimeter hole and then an eight millimeter on top of it in order to establish a shoulder in the bottom of the hole for the screw so it doesn't go all the way through. Um, it's just a matter of setting your depth stop on the on the quill here and uh, the uh, stop down here on the on the table for your vise so that your part doesn't go to it back too far. So. <clears throat> Anyway, YouTubers, that's a wrap for the Marianus go round. Um, sorry, I can't really show you a picture of the machine. I just everything's locked up right now, so I don't have a um, a picture of that setup where these things goes. Um, it's uh, the machine is called an end matcher, where it puts a tongue and groove on the ends of floor, flooring, a tongue and groove flooring, uh, so that you have tongue and groove on the ends of the boards when you have a larger surface to to uh, to do or where the joints meet somewhere in the in the middle of the surface of the uh, floor so that they don't kind of slip by one another as they're being laid so um, anyway that's a wrap for today hope you guys uh, got a little something out of it and uh, sorry about the voice and some of the other not so stellar shots. But anyway, we're trying um, technical information down in the description below. And uh, I haven't heard anything so far from anybody, whether they like it or not. So I'm going to keep doing it until somebody says one thing or the other, uh, one way or the other. So anyway, um, we'll hope to see you again soon. And thanks for stopping by.